Hello, boys. How are we doing? Hello. 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 I am right. doing fantastic. Sante to you all. Sante. Sante, Sante. Happy episode 16. Flying through cool. now, aren't we? Crazy. Flying. Flipping off. Can you believe it? So, um, what we're here for today. Today we are talking stacking in Euro 2024. So, Dornado and Sir Rare Mamba alongside me as always from Swiss Mafia. Uh, we'll start as usual with a little ramble. Uh, we're going to cover a few things around silly season, the transfers that are going on at the minute, the announcements that have happened, uh, and then we're going to get straight into Euro 2024. It is nearly a year away, believe it or not. So we're talking, what, next week we are one year and counting to Euro 2024. Ooh. So excited. I really want to go. Hopefully, Sarah will, will release like quarterfinal tickets for 100,000 so, so rare coins and I can just, you know, Not get myself them. there that way. <laughs> Surely. Surely they'll do some tie in. Something will happen. They did it. Maybe we might have a million followers by then. So we might be like considered, yeah. you know, serious influencers. We can couch surf our way over. Yes. Yeah. So rare will fund us. Yeah, pipe dreams. Oh, well, it's good while it lasted. What is wild is we were at the one, what, well, come the next year, eight years ago. 2016, yeah. is it? Shit. Was that, the nil, was that the nil nil fest that you went to? Yeah, we went to the Euros in France. There was four nil nils in the whole competition, and we saw three of them, which was <laughs> yeah. uh, pretty good. Uh, the mighty big Switzerland games. were part of that as well, weren't they? Yeah. In fact, Although, I wore this shirt and it's so old. Where is it? My Puma badge has disappeared. That's that's how old this shirt is. Christ. We did see Where Darren I'm Sturridge in. sink the Welsh in the 93rd minute in front of the Eiffel Tower, though. That was nice. Um, yeah. Good anyway, times. we digress. Good times. Yeah, yeah. Go. Anyway, so, Ramble. We've had lots happening this week, haven't we? Announcements. Rick, you're, you're, you're better than I am at this. <laughs> Give us a little uh, recap on what's happened this week, announcement-wise. Wow, straight on, like just twist the pressure straight onto me. Jesus Thanks, host. Christ. Um, <laughs> okay, I would like to talk about mystery jerseys. They're being dropped again tomorrow. This time, 35,000 of your finest coins. And this time, they're signed. They There's only 50, right? There's 100 last time, 50 this time, but they're signed. I wonder if Fukimori might be one or Yule. Oh, imagine. Um, yeah. So, again, don't know when they're being dropped tomorrow. Mystery time. Everyone will be sat there refreshing constantly throughout the day. But if you got one the first time, you're on a 30-day cooldown, right? So they aren't eligible to get one. Oh, anymore. is that right? Oh, really? I did not know yeah. that. For, whenever you so get what, one. The big boys can't get one then, like Nellis, for example. No, he's on a 30-day cooldown. So um, that takes 30 people out of the occasion. Equation, sorry. And I guess 35 is a slightly bigger total to need to have. Mm. So... I still think they'll sell out in less than a minute. But I mean, I'm definitely yeah. going for one. I'm definitely going for one. But I won't I'm get actually, one. I'm actually out all day tomorrow. So unless we have like some case cracker who nails the cryptic clues and can give me a pretty definitive answer, then I might try and what, have a go. What, but what other famous Gerard? It's got to be Gerard PK, right? Gerard PK, Eric something. Steven Gerrard, though, he's pretty famous. Yeah, but that's, Ger that's Gerrard. That's different, spelt different. Ah. It's, it's Gerrard, like, with one R. So it's going to be Gerrard PK. It's got to be PK. And P isn't PK part of it as well? Yeah, yeah. And, and then you've got Eric, like, Eric Abadal. I could think of Eric Chupo Motting, which, which I doubt it's him. And Gabriel. There's Gabriel Jesus, Gabriel Batasuta, like you said. There's Gabriel Heinzer. Gabriel Heinzer. And then the green. What's the green circle? Like, what does that mean? Um, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> That's the clues. <laughs> the, the clues have gone out. Oh, I, I wonder what the fuck you're talking about, Eric in green circles. Um, all right, I missed the clues. So the clues were Gerard, comma, Eric, comma, Gabriel or Gabriel, and then green circle. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I'll just I'm go to Discord and I hope think it's still the answer from someone. Yeah, true. I feel like probably the way to do it is do it by the hour, right? Because it's going to be probably a round, well, it's going to be a round number, isn't it, based on those clues. So You think you think they might mix it up because they did it on the hour last time. Um, how's that going to send you to like a half hour or, you know, quarter past or something like that? 
It could be just well, if it's like Eric Abadal War Twenty Two, it could be three twenty two. Who knows? Yeah, it could, yeah. It could be the hour, the minutes, and the second. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Excited to see if we can potentially nab one. Um, but I doubt it. And also, there was a severe lack of Everton people signing shirts in the little little promo video. A lot of Liverpool. <laughs> I mean, imagine imagine getting thirty five thousand coins, getting in, and I win a flipping Virgil Van Dijk signed top. Be the worst day of my life. That would be our next milestone giveaway on the on the <laughs> yeah. platform. Yours for sixty thousand coins. Yeah, there you go. That's something to look forward to. What else have we got? What's, what's depressing, mate, is I don't have thirty five thousand coins, so I'm not going to be trying to take that off your hands. No, I'm like that. I know. I know. Uh, what that? else has happened? As we say, God, uh, John, anything? So we Obviously, I had the major announcement uh, yesterday that they'll be covering the Euro Under 21s, uh, which starts the, on the 29th of June, I think, that, something like that, late in the month, and goes on for about a month. Um, so that's good. Gives an extra bit of utility to some of your cards. You've got Cherokee, obviously, which I've got a rare and a limited of, so I'm excited to see him. And then they're also covering the Gold Cup, which I believe is um, sort of central american um internationals is that right so uh usa canada you you've got curacao which is where eli room plays for my boy uh, Does he play? i haven't seen him play football for a long time i think i think it's very likely he plays because he's like the best player they've ever had so i need um, him to play yeah I'd, I'd love him to play and then you've got the other competition which ricky knows the name of that i don't the copper something 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 Suda Americano, Suda Creme, Copper Suda Creme, Copper Suda Creme. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, nothing yeah. about it. No, nothing about it. But it's it's really good announcement, and you know, the more competitions they can cover in so rare, the better. I mean, I don't see how it hinders in any way. I think it's great to give the extra utility to people and keeps us all preoccupied during the the cold European uh, winter nights in the summer. So. <laughs> Yeah, you get you get the old um, downtime usually, don't you? When you know, if you haven't got MLS, if you're not invested in Asia, then you're, yeah. you know, you can drift away and you pay less attention to it. Slamming these things back in, especially the Euro ones, gives those European players utility again. Um, yeah, and it per perks people' interest. So yeah, I think all good. More utility, the better. Let's uh, what, bring it on. They didn't announce the uh, coverage of a Saudi league, though, did they? I, I thought that that might be next in the pipeline, maybe. At some point, Twitter, Twitter pressure going on that. There's a lot of people know. holding those red crosses, aren't there? What do you What do you think about it? I'm not well, interested. Chinese league never made it round to it, did it? When that had its big thing, but that was very early in Sorez's life, I guess, when China was still hanging on. I think eventually it will have to come if it get if it carries on another year. Like it's going now, Kante, Benzema, Zaha, I think's linked today. Yeah. Everyone's Ronaldo. getting links to it. Yeah, Ronaldo. Yeah. So I think there will come a point where there'll just be so many good players there and, and the Saudi what well, have they given like a twenty billion pound pot to a top four team? Yeah. So just like eventually the, the players it'll just be so good over there. It's covered it's, it's, like covered a top. it's definitely covered by Opta. I yeah. saw someone say it's yeah. it's covered. It's their it's so rare's choice not to not to allow it to be covered on the game, apparently. But you know, you don't know you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe they can't for some reason, I don't know. But um I certainly think it would be good to get a lot of there's a lot of football fans in Saudi Arabia, to be fair. And they probably they probably do the game already, but they probably pump even more money into it if they cover the Saudi leagues, wouldn't they? Let's be honest. And that could only be good for Sora in terms of money coming you've got, in. You've got the human rights issue though. Do so that do, yeah, uh, do that Sora want to delve into that until they absolutely have to say Saudi becomes like the sixth best league in the world yeah. and it makes its way up to there and they go right we've got no choice now there's so many good players there but when it's at this level it's probably something they can yeah. keep off the table and not have to worry about but well, that level of you know, Saudi have money mate That's, you know PGA classic example Saudi have money they can if you if you're so rare how how ethical do you go when you're offered a massive pot of money from They'll want to spread that. They'll want to spread that brand, won't they? So you know they'll be looking for licensing deals and to get, get the word it. out there. 
I don't, I don't like it, but I take it all day long. I mean, I don't like it at all, and I don't agree with it. But if any Saudi billionaires want to come and buy a really good uh, Liverpool-based football team that wear blue and then make us into a giant again, then I'd be all for that. Um, or but... sponsor a really basic podcast <laughs> for you guys. Sponsored really... by Saudi Oil. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, so rare have already shown that they're, they're willing to sort of not follow a league due to politics you know you've got the russian league they stop i mean they still score it because they don't want to screw over people that have the cards but they stopped producing the cards didn't they the new cards mm-hmm. yeah so, you know they're not they're not beyond making decisions that are to do with politics um but yeah it's a tricky one but not not everyone says yes to saudi do they a certain lionel messi that's it know this week didn't whoa they? nice segue host hey, nice segue. Segue. Yeah. what we uh, think on that one boys I'm, do you know what? I'm just really gutted that Phil Neville's not going to get to manage Lionel Messi because I was looking forward to <laughs> seeing Phil Neville going, hey, Lionel, will you just go up the wing a bit more over there, please? Could you I mean, overlap my son Harvey? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, that's no. why Phil got sacked, right? Phil Neville's been sacrificed because Messi went yard cam, but I'm not, I'm not playing for old Philly. Get rid of him and, and we'll talk. And they've, yeah. Who, Who's come in place of him? Have they fired their manager? I reckon they've... He's, Beckham's probably got someone lined up, I'd imagine. Like, I thought they were talking um, about that Teti Martina, aren't they? The um, Argentine, Argentinian uh, yeah. co- coach. Um, he's playing the league, didn't he? He was really good. I think. I think he's great, yeah. right? I love. Um, I love MLS. It's one of my. It's probably. It's up there. It's probably might be my favourite league on so rare. Anyway, it's the first one I got into on here. Love it. Get Lionel over there. I think it's. I think it's great. I. I instantly snowballed into FOMO yesterday as soon as uh, the news. I spoke to you on the phone, Jess, and I went, no, nah, yeah, I'm not going to do it, though, because it's just a waste of money. Like, <laughs> what do I want to do for, do for that? And now my portfolio has not only Lionel Messi, but I then Snap overpaid for Campania and Josef Martinez as well, just because yeah. I was like, right, let's, let's have a little stack. Here's this striker I bought for the under-21 competi- under competition I'm not going to enter and don't need. Uh, so I FOMO'd into that yesterday as well. So yeah, overall it's a good day. Uh, wasted a load of money that I don't want on yellows I don't oh, need. I saw into Miami potentially getting Suarez, Busquets, and who was the other one? Al was it Alba as well? Yeah, Jordi Alba. Yeah. Alba and Busquets were kind of a couple. I mean, mm. they need him. They're bottom of the league, aren't they? Into Miami. <laughs> yeah, they're dog, and their yeah. best two players are injured as well: Motta and Gregor, and Neville. Yeah. Neville's son. Well, their DP is a Pizarro who's not really, yeah, he's not, quite, not doing anything. Gregor, who's injured, and their other DP is not Jose. Joseph he's... now or not? No, I think it's Campania. Is it? I mean, he's, he's all Joseph. right, but he's not great. Yeah, so yeah, they've not got a great squad, but they've obviously, you know, saved themselves for this. So it'd be interesting to see what the league make them do, whether they make him a designated player, whether they've got some special stuff for him. So he's got part of the Apple deal, would not he, and part of the kit deal. So that's I think it's great. He gets he gets a percentage of money from subscriptions, doesn't he? But it's straight yeah. from Apple. Doesn't even go through into yeah. Miami. Just yeah, comes man. straight from Apple. So Apple are literally paying in on Messi money. Yeah. So at every franchise in the whole league. That's the other yeah. They're mad. paying for him to just play against them because they and know he'll he, bring in the money. Didn't he have some clause that um in five years' time, he can buy a franchise or start it, yeah. a franchise, which is what like Beckham. Because Beckham, Beckham didn't Beckham technically buy his franchise for fifteen million or something, and then they're worth six hundred million now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, Be- yeah. Beckham paved the way for all this all that time ago, and the league's yeah. like grown to such a level since then. And now Messi's going to take it on to a, the next one. But from a from a so rare point of view, I mean, I don't think it makes too much difference. He was one of the best players. At PSG, he'll be one of the best players in the MLS, but you just—he's not in Champion Europe anymore, right? He's in Champion America, so it's a good summer option though, because summer options are pretty shit for strikers, aren't they? Yeah, I don't think he goes until his contract ends at the end of June, right? That's so what I'm saying. Till, like, I think he'll he come straight in. He probably won't play till mid-July, I, I would reckon. So you're getting close back to like European season-ish then. But yeah, that's a good shout actually. No, I mean, no, obviously no. he's got obviously the players around him aren't anything like they were at PSG. He was playing with the world elite, dicking on farmers, wouldn't he, in French league? And now he's playing with absolute dross against you know some proper dross. So it's going to be frustrating. Playing doesn't, that like, crap, doesn't Kieran Gibbs play for Inter Miami? Retired. He did. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, DeAndre Yedlin, I think, plays right back. Yeah, he does. Him. They used to have Ryan Shawcross as well, didn't they? Imagine if they still had Ryan Shawcross playing centre back with Lionel Messi. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of trash there, isn't there? But it's yeah, exciting. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. Yeah, it's I'm great. looking forward to it. I mean, we're chatting about it right now, so it's it's got the hype. And I think it's sign me up, baby. I'm, I mean, I'm a San Jose boy, but I have always had a bit of an affection for Inter Miami because of Beckham um, being my absolute god. So yeah, I'm 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 excited to watch a few of their games. Probably get a shirt in. Hopefully, I win a mystery jersey tomorrow in the Miami, signed by Messi. He's an ambassador, right? They've probably got loads of Messi shirts knocking around. Probably got a load of PSG ones they need to knock off now that they're just going to send out to everyone. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Like yesterday, yeah. obviously, obviously, you had um, not only was the Messi thing announced yesterday, but the the um, uh, Bellingham to Real Madrid news was, was announced as well, which is... Also, it kind of got sort of left behind in the shadow of Messi, really. But that is also was it 100 million euros? It's, yeah, hell of a transfer. Price. Yeah. So they're going to have Messi, Camavinga, tu Tuchimene, Cruz, Modric. Like it's just the most ridiculous midfield I've ever heard. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're well set, aren't they? For Modric and Cruz yeah. to disappear now with uh, Tuchimene, Camavinga, Bellingham. I think Bellingham's great player. Any club in the world could have. You know, yeah, United should have got him. They massively missed out on that. I remember laughing when Birmingham City retired his number when they sold him. Thinking, Who the hell do they think he is? And actually, he's probably one of the best midfielders that's ever existed. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out they were right. And, anyway, uh, McAllister went to Liverpool as well, didn't he? Very cheap, thirty-five million bargain. That's not sure he's signing. any good for so rare though. I mean, mm, not sure. I wouldn't touch a wouldn't touch a bin dipper anyway. But uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I think he's very good real life transfer, probably not for so rare. Yeah, agree, mate. Agree. And that's like your transfer now. roundup. So, uh, Everson, got linked, Everson got linked with Ralph Bedhorse as well. Don't forget that. Mate, they, they're so going to get true. linked with every single shit United player going. <laughs> You're going to have Van der Beek, there's going to be Fred, yeah. there's going to be probably Phil Jones now that he's Maguire. on the show. <laughs> Rick, that is an impressive bottle you got going on there. Big bottle so for a big boy. boy. Love it, love it. Mm. Right, for, for the fourth time, I'm going to try and take us away from the transfer Sorry, yeah. transfer stories. <laughs> we uh, we back... went so seamlessly through the ramble this week, see? Now, like, everything just links so smoothly. That's true. Apart from the end. So, let's go back to the Euros, back to Europe. So, 2024, 14th of June, 14th of July, in Germany. We will be there, won't we, Rick? And we Johnny, will indeed. Johnny, will we be there? We'll see. We'll see. Mm, that doesn't sound likely as him. That's like as him getting a Sora data membership. <laughs> <laughs> when do I have to let you know? When do I have to let you know? Well, me and Ricky are saving already. So um yeah, I think you should start start prepping the misses that conversation. Yeah. Um where are we gonna go? So we've got Berlin, Cologne, Dortmund, Dusseldorf, Frankfurt, Gelsenkirchen, Hamburg, Leipzig, Munich, Stuttgart. There's all the big stadiums. That's a hell of a trip. Where are we going? I'd like to go to Berlin. I really like the Olympic Stadion. My boys hurt at Berlin. You know, they could do with all the support they can get now. They've knocked down to two Bundesliga. They could probably do with the pennies and the revenue. So <laughs> Shit, yeah, I forget they've gone down. Yeah. Uh, well, no, they the won't. Union, the Union Berlin play there as well, or are they two separate stadiums? Separate one. Mm, separate, yeah. The Berlin yeah. one's actually the, the biggest capacity stadium in Germany. Because it eliminates the Olympic Stadium, right? It's amazing, yeah. really, really, really good stadium to go and well, visit. Out. No. 70k, 70k, you wouldn't feel that. Oh, you've been there, haven't you, Rick? Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice yeah. to have a pint in there, have a smoke, chill out, eat a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> it sinks into the ground, it sinks down, like it, it's, it's really cool. There's big, grand sculptures outside. Love need, it. Needs a better team, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it serves mm -hmm. a better team, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go to see the, the Yellow Wall. I'd like to go to Dortmund yes, as well. Same. Yeah, quality, it? yeah. A 66k massive stadium. And, and I think Munich's worth a, a visit as well, just a cool city. Yeah. Really? Loads great. to do. Anyway, John, lo lots for you to think about. Um, so, yeah, have, have that conversation with uh, Mrs. Mrs. Dornado fairly soon, please, mate. Yeah. She's, she pro she's probably lurking in the background. She often is. Yeah. Isn't she? She's probably got me bugged right now, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. Cool. So yeah, anyway, Euro 2024, it is incoming. We are planning early. Why are we doing it? Because we've got the qualifiers coming up 
the 16th, I think it is, off the top of my head. Um, and there's a couple of game weeks of qualifiers, two, two opportunities to win. Then a bit of a gap again. Uh, in my head, everyone was going to be selling their European players a bit cheaper than they are right now. I mean, there's still those bargains, but I was thinking there's going to be a big sell-off and it was a good opportunity to get them in before these Euro games. I think everyone's probably thought the same thing. So I'm seeing prices going up again. And obviously we've had pretty positive announcements. Um, so I guess we're trying to think about, can we can we maximise the profits on these couple of games, but also thinking ahead of next year. So some players that you might want to pick up um, and potentially hold um, rather than just the old flip. But anyway, so what we're going to do is three teams each we've picked. So three potential stacking teams. Uh, and across those three teams, we've picked then a group of five players for you that you can play so rick are you ready uh yeah i can do one team first yeah yeah go for it who have you got in fact run for all three of them and then and then and then check your team on there please isn't it what so run through all three teams yeah go for it all right wow power on okay my first team that i'm going to talk about is in group c which is england's group it is the ukraine uh, I am picking these because I really like their two fixtures that are coming up in the next uh, in this international window. They play North Macedonia away on Friday the 16th, and then they are home to Malta on the 19th. Home to Malta is obviously an absolute prime real estate game that you are, you know, hoping for an ass kicking and uh, get your get your exercises up all over the pitch. North Macedonia have got a few good players, but you know, I think they're I think they're beatable, and it's a game Ukraine really need to really need to win. It's a it's a big one for them. If they don't win that, then they're pretty much done of any chance of qualifying. They're obviously England, as you can see. We're obviously going to cruise it. Um, so I think they're playing Italy, who have already lost the game, to see if they can get through in that second position. So North Macedonia next is a massive one for them. Um, I think they've got really nice balanced squad obviously there's a lot of trouble at home which has affected players personally and footballing wise in Ukraine itself over the last you know year and a bit um but there's still plenty of good options and then they've got a great young goalie Trubin um Yuramchuk is out of this squad um he's usually the forward you would go to but uh two players that I am going to pick out of this in fact did I pick two yeah, I'd probably go for three of my five out of this Ukrainian team if I was building a reasonably priced stack. You'll see what I mean in a minute is I could build a five-star, all-star team that I'm thinking of, you know, what people can realistically do. And you're probably not going to spend four grand on a five-man team for the Euro qualifiers. So I really like Matt Vienko, who plays for Shakhtar Donetsk in defence. You know, I think you're probably banking on a clean sheet against Malta and you'd like to think they'd have a strong chance of conceding no more than one um, and being pressing forward and have a lot of possession against North Macedonia. And he's really cheap at 0.0299 as the floor. His last sale was half of that and it's, it's really cheap as well. Uh, and he's a very consistent scorer there. Um, and I would go for two players in their midfield lineup. Uh Heroi Sudakrem, uh, as I affectionately know. Sudakrem. Sudakrem. He is 20, so you've got yonks of under 23 utility. He's at Shakhtar as well. Um, puts up good scores. There's not many cards of him about, but his limited is really cheap. Um, you know, last sale was four quid. Uh, it's 48 rares knocking around for a pretty decent price. Um, plays usually in that hole behind the strikers for them, which is a really good, you know, place to pick up decisives for a team like Ukraine. And then the last player I would go for, uh, Zinchenko is not in the squad either. He would have been a good shout, but I would pick up Mudrik. Um, still be under 23 for Chelsea next for two more years. Um, didn't have a great season, came in for a lot of money, new coach. You know, I expect him to kick on season two. Uh, his last sale was £184 in rare, which is really cheap for someone at that much talent. It was going for a lot higher prices not that long ago. 18 quid for a limited, you know, be a talisman for that Ukrainian team. And I really, 
think that's a pretty cheap price for someone I expect to kick on for Ukraine and Chelsea in the next season. Um, my second team is Group A, uh, and that is the Georgians. Uh, I've seen a lot of people talking about their under-23 team and the under-23 players they got, which is what's drawn me to them. There's a lot of up-and-coming talent um, with the under-21 Euros tournament coming up and these qualifying games. And just those players play to quite a high standard as well. So they'd be really useful to use in SO5 for the following season. Um, they're currently played one, lost one. Um, no, drew one, sorry. They drew with Norway in the first game, which I think is quite a reasonable result, actually. Norway, a decent team. They got that fiend up front that he won't be named after they beat us in the FA Cup final. Um, so they're playing Scotland uh, away on the 20th, and they're playing Cyprus away on the 17th. Two... You know, not the easiest games, but also not impossible games. Um, so you think that Scotland one's a must win to claw some space back up because Spain, you think, is going to end up running away with the group. So it's Scotland, Norway, Georgia, I think, for the second place. So I'd want a bit of, um, I'd want a big result against Scotland next up. Uh, players that I picked from this team, I went with. I went with a bit of a rogue shout. I picked him from my under-23 team, Georges Mikautadadzi. Uh, that's probably how you say his name. The Met striker. I've been linked to Aberdeen and lots of other places. Um, he'd be one that I would stick up front. He usually plays up there with... Um, is it the guy from... I'm, I'm not, I would say that because I don't want to say another name, butcher it to death, but the Napoli midfielder who's, you know, hyped to hell. I haven't put him in because who realistically wants well, to pay for well, Charlo, isn't it? Something like well, that. Yeah. My boy checked Javedzi out there as well. If you were starting, you'd definitely be in my boy. But um, he's not. So there's a reasonably priced alternative compared to the Napoli guy. I would really like this guy. I've wanted to buy him anyway. So this would just be another excuse to get in an under-23 international forward, you know, under-21 tournament still. Like, He's a world beater with those scores in my eyes. Get him in. Um, but yeah, I really like them as an upcoming squad. They've got the Valencia goalie, Mama Dashvili. Um, there's just lots of nice young talent throughout this team. So yeah, I would be having a bit of Georgia in Group A as well. And then my final team would be Group H and a little bit of the Finns. Um, sign me up for some fins. It looks, you know, a group that's well up for well up for grabs. Um, they've played two. They've got three points. They lost to Denmark, who you make favourites for this group, and they beat Northern Ireland, who, you know, pretty crap. Could have Roy Carroll in goal for all I know. Um, so they play Friday 16th, they're home to Slovenia, and Friday 19th, they've got the absolute plum draw against San Marino. Uh, you know, that's why I want them over these next two fixtures because although Slovi two home fixtures is nice, uh, Slovenia are a decent team, so that one could be difficult. But then, you know, you'd hope that they give San Marino a shoeing. Um, and for that, I'd put Hirodeki as my goalkeeper in my overall five because you just hope he's going to nail you at least one clean sheet there against uh, San Marino. Other options that I had a little look at were mainly in the striking options. I know Johnny is your boy, Joel, Pope, Jan Palo, who drinks oh, beers oh. after he scores. Really nice scores, but I just I just couldn't nail him down as a definite starter for them. Um, so Timo Puki would be the other one that would grab my attention. I could easily slot him into the forward position instead of uh, the match striker, mm -hmm. just as a more budget-friendly option. He's on his way to Minnesota in the MLS by the looks of it, and, you know, he's, he's reliable. Oh and reasonably cheap he has a little spike today because all those rumors have come out so yeah two good games for finland which is why i would be looking at getting on them which leaves me with uh this five which i went for for my international break euro championship nice. qualification five um yeah you if you've got a massive budget you could easily slot in some other players here but i you know try to keep it mid you know matt vienko and sudakev are, give, uh, are giving you a little bit more of a balanced budget and mudrick is fairly cheap for what i think scott you know a longer career out of him so yeah that is my five 
And those are my three teams, Finland, Georgia, Ukraine for the break. Bam. I like it. Not very obvious picks either. You're picking up Mudra he's and not, get a time He's not finished, is he? He's not finished. He's not finished. I'll tell you what, though. That um, that team and keeper, Northern Ireland, that you were uh, down talking, calling him Roy yeah. Carroll. It's Bailey Peacock Farrell, I have you know. And he's my he's my goalkeeper I'm riding on. So mm. yeah. well, you ride or die with Bailey Peacock Farrell, don't you? You love him. I'm pretty Apologies sure he's going to he's gonna keep a cleanie. Oh, Apologies, yeah. Northern Ireland. Big up, David Healy. Um, David Healy. Nice. nice. I like it, Rick. Like it. John, are you ready? I am. I am. I am. I am. So, um, I unfortunately don't have a so rare data membership, as been mentioned. So, <laughs> I, won't, I won't be able to uh, build a lineup mm. for you. Someone else will have to do that. Um, however, is this working? Two seconds. Show on stream. Okay. So rare data fighting back. Uh, for some reason, it's not letting me share my screen. <laughs> Even though I've just set it to work. There we go. Right. Um, so my first team I've gone for is Norway. Um, they have a really good striker. I think he's called Har Holland or Holland. Something no like fucking that. way. No, no, I'm not going to mention it, but I'm going to go for Norway. So Norway do have two very good fixtures um, coming up. They're playing home to Scotland, which is probably the tougher of the two fixtures on Saturday. Uh, and then on Tuesday, uh, the late game. So they've got two straight. They've got the weekend game week and the midweek game week. So you've got two two game weeks in a row with Norwegian utility. They have Cyprus at home. Um, Cyprus are really bad. Um, Scotland obviously have started really well. Uh, got two wins from two, including a win against Spain. But I think I think Norway are probably likely to win at home. Scotland. Um, I know that. Uh, Norway have only got a draw and a loss, but I think their draw and potentially their loss, Harland, Harland couldn't play either of those games, so I don't think their best player was playing. Obviously, they've got Odegaard as well. Um, but yeah, my first player is Frederick Arznes, um, someone I know quite well. I have actually, actually won his limited last week, which was quite how handy. Do, how do you know him, mate? How do you know him? Uh, I know him really well. I went to school with him, actually. Ah. Yeah. He's not, he's not in your gallery like the rest of the picks, so. Um, No, but Arsenal's definitely is. I mean, surely <laughs> having them in my gallery is like the biggest, the biggest like reference I can give. I'm putting my money where my mouth is, you know? That is true. That yeah, is I'm, true. Not, I'm not trying to sell them. I'm, I'm de you know that. I don't, you I never sell. I never sell. But, <laughs> um, so Arsenal's is a key, a key man for Benfica and a key man for Norway as well. His uh, SO5 scores are very solid. Um, if you look here, he's a pretty good scorer. Most of these games for Benfica, he's actually playing as a right wing back this season, uh, just try because they were trying to shoot him in so much. But um, he's a centre midfielder or a right centre midfielder. Uh, he's a very solid scorer. And, you know, I'm not sure whether Norway will actually get to the Euros. They've got a very tough group, obviously, with Spain. Uh, Georgia have been talked about. They've got some really good players. Scotland, obviously, decent at the moment as well. So it's, it's going to be a, a hard fight for them to actually get to the Euros. But with a player like Arsenez, you've got really good utility um, for his club as well. So it's not going to be a bad purchase to, to buy him anyway. You can get his limited for about sort of 10 to 15 pounds at the moment, which I think is pretty good value, especially when you look at the prices of the other Benfica midfielders. Um, so yeah, I think he'd definitely be definitely be one of my picks. Um, my next one I've gone for is Leo Ostergaard. Um, not hurt, not actually really known too much about him before I started researching today, but he's yeah, he's been starting for Napoli in place of Kim Min Jae the last sort of month of the season, six weeks of the season. Um, obviously Kim Min Jae, I think, is leaving Napoli, so is likely to sort of keep that place, I'd say. He's performed pretty well um, in the few games he's played. Um, he's got potential for big scores and he's still young. Um, yeah, I think he's another good shout for a good solid scorer for Norway uh, this weekend. So, so yeah, those would be my two Norway guys. Uh, I've never heard of him. 
There's not often you get players pop up you haven't heard of. Yeah, so this is the guy, I kind of came across him and thought he could be a really good shout. So, yeah, he's a sort of a bit out there pick from me. But, yeah, Arsenal is definitely the more well-known player. But, but yeah, um, my second team is, I know I've mentioned it before, mentioned it on Tuesday, but it is uh, Group J, the massive club that is Luxembourg. Massive team, sorry, not club. Um they, right, okay, they're not going to make the Euros, okay? I'm not saying Luxembourg are making the Euros. You know, I'd be happy if they proved me wrong, but they do have a very good fixture uh, this weekend. And they actually have, um, a, a, like Norway, they have two games, a uh, midweek game and a weekend game. So you've got two straight, uh, two straight game weeks of having a bit of utility from them. But the main utility you're going to get from them is a home to Liechtenstein, uh, which is on... Saturday, 2 p.m., so in the middle of the game week. I did just take a little screenshot of Liechtenstein's last sort of 10, 15 results. Um, they lost 7 0, 4 0, 2 0, 2 0, 2 0, 2 0, 4 0, 4 0, 2 0, 1 0, 6 0, 2 0, 9 0, 4 0, 2 0, and then they drew 1 all. So they haven't scored a goal. Liechtenstein have not scored a goal for about 15 games. Um, so guaranteed. So what, they, so what you're saying is they drew one, yeah? Yeah, guaranteed yeah. they'll score this weekend. But um, yeah, so my play I've gone for is Anthony Morris. Um, I do know I already own one of him, okay, before you say. Um, <laughs> Imagine but, my surprise. What a surprise. He is actually really cheap at the moment. He's like 15 to 20 pounds um, for his goalkeeping card. His limited, that is. And he also plays for arguably the best team in Belgium and is going to be, he's not going to be leaving anytime soon. So, so I think once again, he's not only a good option for the Luxembourg game at home to Liechtenstein on the weekend, but moving forward, you're not going to lose money on him. It's not like, it's not like his price has increased because of this good fixture. Like his price is going to keep for you for a while. Um, but yeah, guaranteed they lose three nil now and he gets a negative decisive of conceded three goals. Um, but yeah, he's going to be my goalkeeper of choice for this weekend. Um, he's not going to get much action, is he? But he's going to have that clean. Yeah, he's, he's got like, it. yeah, you'd hope so. You'd hope so. But um, yeah, my next player is also from Luxembourg. Um, I've gone for, this is a bit of a rogue pick. So I've gone for Daniel Sinani. Um, he is someone that a few English followers may know. He's, I think he was potentially, I can't remember where he was before Norwich. Was it Swansea? I can't remember, but anyway, he's at Norwich and he's was on loan at Wigan last season. He's a decent player. He's got the potential to have some good scores. Uh, if you look here, he's historically done pretty well, but he's actually one of the key guys for Luxembourg. He actually plays up front for Luxembourg, despite being a midfielder in his club uh, career. Uh, obviously, some not good scores here, but that was Portugal. Um but he, he does have the potential to get some big scores. If you're looking down here, uh, he's looking here for Luxembourg. He's got a couple of goals there, where Lithuania. But I'm basically banking on him starting and doing very well at home to Liechtenstein. So I'm putting I'm putting a lot of emphasis on this Luxembourg Liechtenstein fixture here. Um, but yeah, so I've gone for that's my two from Luxembourg. Uh, my last team, which I fancy to do pretty well, is. Ireland, up the Irish. So they've had a tricky little start to their uh, campaign. They lost 1-0 at home to France, I think it was. Seamus Coleman did completely pocket Kylian Mbappe, though. Um, but they do have a very a tough group of France, Netherlands and Greece. But one of their fixtures this weekend is Gibraltar at home. Uh, you'd like to think they're going to smash Gibraltar. I think the majority of Gibraltar, uh, Gibraltar players are dentists and PE teachers. So, yeah, you'd like to think they're going to do well. Um, also, what is good about Ireland um, coming up, sorry, not this weekend, but the weekend after, is that both their games are in the same game week. Uh, they're Friday 7.45 and Monday 7.45. So you're going to get, I think the new rule came in, didn't it, where they get the highest, is it the highest score of the two? Yeah, best score. Best, best, score, yeah, best two. score. 
And yeah, basically. So they've got a tough first game. I think they've got Holland away, but their second game is no Greece away. They've got they've got uh, Gibraltar at home on the Monday, and I've gone for Ewan Ferguson, um, or even Evan Ferguson rather than Ewan Ferguson. Um, he's someone I've watched quite a bit for Brighton this season. He is a he's a natural, a naturally good striker. He's fast, he's quick, he's tall, he's got a good touch, and he's got a good finish. And I think he's so everything you don't. Basically, yeah. I mean, it's only a matter of time before he joins a really big team. Like, I've, you can just tell. Is he that good? I haven't seen a lot of him. So I've, I've seen people talk of him, but I honestly have no idea a of him. Of hype. A lot of hype, but he's like 18 years old and he's it already looks like he, he could, like, yeah, bustle most people off the ball. Um, good he's, future a great, head. he's got a good future head and he's playing Gibraltar at home next Monday. So I think he's going to have an, an absolute world, to be honest with you. He's, he is a little bit inflated in price right now. You can pick one up for about £25. But What's a red? Oh, red is money. red's considerably higher, so I'd, I'd be staying clear of reds right now. But limited-wise, I still think that's actually quite cheap um, for what he could get you. And especially as I think he's got Man United written all over him in the future, to be perfectly honest yeah. with you. Yeah, you reckon? United. He looks like a Man United striker to me, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah, it definitely looks like that. They want a long term number, uh, like a long term number nine and a short term number nine. So, yeah. you know, he could he could provide the. Yeah, no, the so I think, one. I think obviously Ireland have got Greece away, which is a tough fixture, but Gibraltar at home, I think you could pick any of the Irish players. Uh, and because they've got the two games in the two in the one game week, you just got sort of like a double chance of scoring well. And one of the games is against Gibraltar. So, I think Ireland's a good good team to be having a look at at the moment. Um, but yeah, you can pick up those five players for around £75 total for limited at the moment, which I think is quite good value. And all yeah, good players at go. all. Oh, there you go. There's so, your five. Yeah, about 75 quid at the moment. I think, I think that's very, very solid. And that team is going to do well. I think the only one that's potentially not future-proofed is Sonani. I don't know what's going to happen with Sonani. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty solid to be honest with you. I like the matchups; some very good matchups, and a few a few uh, picks that probably a lot of people haven't got or thought about. I'm right. Some sort of touch, JD. <laughs> Apart from you, obviously, you own them. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, come on then, host. What have you got? Yeah, in yeah, what have you got in the locker for us? Where do you reckon we're going first? Could be anywhere, anywhere in Europe. Where do you think we're going? Oh, you know. Are we going to, are we going to Harris Seferovic's house? I wouldn't like to take your shirt off your back if I got it right. So <laughs> We might be going to Harris Seferovic's house. So Group I is where he's living at the minute. Um, rent free, actually, because he's not even been playing. He, I, in fact, will he even make the squad? I haven't actually had a look because he's playing for Celta Vigo or has been. Um, but anyway, Switzerland are my first pick. Um not just because I'm being biased, but because their group, Romania, Kosovo, Andorra, Israel, Belarus, it's pretty pants. I think Israel are going to pick up um, and qualify. Switzerland, historically, are just really, really good, like really good at qualifying. Um, a bit like England are to a point. Always, always do well, score goals, don't concede many, and then go to the tournament and kind of pretty steady, but, uh, you know, underwhelming. Um their first couple of games they've had already, two wins from two, beat Belarus 5-0, beat Israel 3-0, who I think are the closest competitor, um, and importantly, haven't conceded a goal. they got Andorra away next, and then Romania at home. I'd expect six points from that. Um, and again, most importantly, I don't think they're going to concede a goal in either of those games. So kind of my, my big sort of um, shout would be pick, pick the Swiss stacks in terms of um, the defence and goalie. Um, the problem with the Swiss team, historically it's been pretty settled and easy to call, but in defence there may be a few changes. So I've, I've slammed up kind of the five that I would go for across Switzerland at the minute. Um, Soma's nailed on as keeper. I think he's got two clean sheets coming down. He'll be playing from the back. So you're probably looking at a 60-plus score both games unless something goes wrong. A Kanji likewise, nailed on centre-back. Unless he's injured, he's 100% playing and he's playing at the minute. Xhaka, likewise, again, um, potentially he's going to hit a 60-plus just playing in midfield and obviously decides he can do more. Um, then it gets a little bit more sticky. So in striker department, Mbolo's come back from injury. 
he's been fairly underwhelming, but he hasn't been fit yet. He's always he's always streaky and gets injured and then comes back again and then gets injured and then comes back again. So like his price at one fifty at the minute, I watched one on auction to actually bid on it. He went for one five three, and I think that's overpriced considering what he delivers. Rick, I think you said he got a copy of him and not getting much return. Yeah, um, yeah, I've had his limited all season. He's done absolute naffle. Yeah, um, he's like in, he's overhyped a bit, isn't he? To be honest, yeah, the rotation injuries. It's just not been um not been a great season for him. Uh, and no. Seferovic isn't in the squad, so there's no there pressure from Sefer coming on him. <laughs> so I don't see it. Iten will be the main kind of other option who plays in Switzerland. Cedric Iten, he's not he's not better than Mbolo. Better, say Mbolo's got his fitness back, so he should be starting. Um, the reason I would have him is he's also got a cap space of 33 at the minute. So um, for me, that's pretty ridiculous for someone who's got two easy fixtures and will be starting up top. And the hard part, again, as I said, is picking that fifth player. So you've got, I've gone for Ricky Rodriguez because Rodriguez, he takes penalties. Um, I, th- I think he'll get a clean sheet and he's guaranteed to be the, pretty much guaranteed to be the left back. Normally I'd go for the other centre back pairing, but it's quite hard to call who plays between Fabian Cher of Newcastle and uh, Nico Elvidi of Bruce and Munchgladbach. I think it will be Elvidi's played the last few, but obviously Cher's had a great season. That's why I'm going with Rodriguez. If I was stacking, I would straight out across the three teams just go for these five. I had a play around earlier and was like, actually, these five over the next two fixtures and just in general for qualifying will get you your best bang for your buck. And I think they'll actually win prizes. Um, the, the the danger is in Bolo. So if there's a potential to find a better strike across your stacks for in Bolo, that's what I would do. Um, any thoughts actually, on that, boys? I actually have a four man Swiss stack. Um, I have a Kanji Soma and Bolo. I have Elvedi. I just sold Vargas, so I actually short for midfielder. So I could take on your wisdom and get a Xhaka in and run a Swiss stack and see if uh, we can back up your claims. I, tr- I trust Xhaka. Xhaka's, the play runs through him. He's he's on form. He's obviously he's eyeing up another club at the minute, isn't he? Um, he's got window got time. Yeah, something to play for. And they... I'm very confident they will win probably 3 0, and it's going to be an easy game 3 0 plus. So he's going to have a lot of the ball. There you go. Pump done. Go. Um, so, second team we're going to um, is uh, get my screen to group D, I believe they're in. Just while I waste some time trying to find my window because we've got so many open. Phil, Phil, um, Phil. So, <laughs> we're, just, we're going just across the bridge. So, we're going across to Wales. Um, Still trying to search for the group, still can't find it. So let's just from, get them straight. From, Swiss, from Switzerland? There's no bridge from Switzerland to Wales, I don't think. There we I are. Swear. So, Wales. Croatia are obviously the hot favourites in that group. Um, Turkey. I think Turkey probably are better than Wales as well. They've got some good players, good strikers. Their main strikers are interested at the minute, though. Um, Armenia have got Zella, haven't they, John? Yes. Um, so, Armenia probably on their day might have something in them but i think that's a that's a should be a wales qualification if they can if they can do turkey um no guarantees who have i got from the welsh team or who would i put in the squad from there so i am going for just get these boys up so we got danny ward in sticks i would have had um then joe rodon harry wilson Kiefer moore and brennan johnson so again, Swiss stack I would have gone for. If I had to pick my five, it's just a Swiss stack. But I think by having the Welsh option as well, you've got quite a few players on low caps in terms of striker options. So Kiefer Moore, 31, and Brennan Johnson, 41. Pick, pick these boys up. Kiefer Moore's at 25 quid, Johnson 75. I think Johnson's really good. I think huge potential there for next year, depending on where he goes. Um, Everson. Well, maybe, maybe that potential suddenly declines. Um, but Wales for me would be like if you if you got your Swiss Swiss squad for your two hundred and forty potentially Wales you can fit fit your team under in the two hundred and twenty cap as well so I think it's just another good option to have um, and then my final final team um, so final team we're looking at is Sweden so big V in the house that's exactly it mate nailed it so the reason why I'm looking at Sweden mainly because of big V. Um, couldn't have a uh, a pod without mentioning this week. So Victor is 
Do you know he's a Swedish captain? I mean, that's, oh. you probably do know that. It's probably obvious. We remember to the fan club, so we do we do know everything. Of we know that. Yeah. yeah. So big Vic, the Swedish captain, nailed on the start. Um, I'm quite intrigued where he goes this season, though. Like, do you think he leaves United? Because United are searching for another centre back, aren't they? No, I think he's. I think he's the third. I think third choice back. I if they do I, get Kim and Jay, you know, there's a lot of talk that he's got his like his buyout clause is July, isn't it? So if we get Kim and Jay, then maybe he doesn't want to play fourth fiddle. But there's a lot of injuries back there, you know. I think I, I don't think they'll let him go, will they? If they get rid of Maguire, then sure, why would they get rid of Lindelof as well? They might force him to stay. Yeah, yeah, I think with all the competitions, the four centre backs at United get a lot of run out. Look how many games Luke That's Shaw's true. played as centre back for United this season. Mm-hmm. Um, going to get injured at some point, isn't he? Martinez is there. injured for a while, isn't he? Isn't he? Didn't he do his Achilles? Uh, I can't remember. He was dead out for the whole season, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I um, think be, I think Martinez might still be out for the start of next season. To be honest with you, there you go. But anyway, so I've gone for I've gone for Sweden as kind of my. My wild card, I guess. They've, they've actually got quite a tricky group. Um, so they've got um, a few, what you could almost call sort of derby games. So they've got Austria, um, fairly local, and Belgium. Uh, though, I, I don't know what you think. I think probably Austria and Belgium are better teams than Sweden, man for man. Um, so Sweden potentially, Estonia's obviously given Azerbaijan the same. So... so Fixture wise, you can pick up some some good scoring again when they hit it, especially Azerbaijan. They've got Estonia in one of the next games, well, two games time, but they've got Austria next up. So it's all in the next game, really. Um, as I said, it's a bit of a wild card, but I'd like to see them go through and I think they've got a chance to. Austria seemed to underwhelm a little bit as well, last few qualifiers. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I've gone for gone for Sweden and Olsen in goal, uh, who is dead cheap. I think I picked one up for 80 quid. He's, he's the starting keeper for those guys. Are you own him, do you? I do, yeah. yeah. What, what the hell? Do you own a Lindelof? I, know, well? uh. I do, I do. But oh, but how many of those Swiss a... players do you own as well? Do you own a Xhaka? <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't know about this. <laughs> That's my joke, yeah. mate, right? I've got to have awful, something on awful it. fishy over here, isn't it? Oh, right, man. anyway. So Olsen in goal, Lindelof at, at the back. Uh, Forsberg. Bit of a gamble, but I always thought he was a really good player. Like he used, he used to be, he was a bit of a darling for football index for me. I had a, I had yeah, a that's how I remember him. Index, yeah. So part of me's kind of I've looked at his scores and he's got his he's got his peaks for the national team, and I'm thinking maybe he can you know maybe he can deliver, especially for his cap price um and the cost at 45 quid. Maybe he even moves to another club. I don't know. Um I think, isn't he on loan somewhere from from uh, Leipzig? I'm just going to look at Not up. sure. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with you, the Sweden midfielders, between him and Svanberg, so that's where the midfield kind of is, that's the weak spot, I'd say. And up top, I mean, that's really strong for me, Isaac and Jokeres. Jokeres, I probably is going to Prem, so God knows where he goes and what his scores end that next year. But he Edison. looks a really good player. Like, he, he can do a bit of everything. Um, and Isaac, yeah, he's really if good. he stays fit, it's class. Yeah, in fact, Rick, you've got Jokeres, haven't you? Really, really good striker. Really good to watch. Yeah, he's he's... Got a big move ahead of him. I think he can go a lot higher than, obviously, playoffs in the championship. But no, that's a that's a not bad team overall. Uh, I really like the Swiss stack. I like I got a lot of the players, and they're probably good going forward. A lot of those uh, Swedish players are good holds as well going forward. The Welsh team, a bit less because obviously Ward's lost his starting job. Kiefer Moore doesn't start that much. I really like Brennan Johnson, but yeah, but focus Wild, more. So the Wales one, right? The keeper. They got. Do you know who the who the other options are? Hennessy. Wayne Hennessy. Yeah, who's he's what, 36? He, he, he's like third choice. Oh, I think yeah. might even be retiring. Um, and then the other guy is like league, I think he's league one. Yeah. They've well, like, Wales are Wales are in a bit of a transition now. Obviously, now Bale's retired to the golf course. And it's, I don't I'm not sure if Ramsey actually retired, but he's, he's injured now. again. He's, he's, injured, calf, he's always injured. Too. Plus he's old and he, he'll be he'll be gone soon. They seem to think that Joe Allen was like Messiah when he got injured and then they got him back in the Euros and he's yeah he's not very good but um there is good young like Ben and Johnson's very good yeah, yeah they, they, have, yeah, they, they are in a little bit player. of a transition Joe Rodon's a good centre back actually I saw the Wren um Wren coach came out this week and said how much they'd love to keep him because he's obviously on loan there from Spurs I mean I it baffles me how he's not played for Spurs really because you look at how bad Spurs have been 
at the back last season. They got um, Der- Eric Dyer is about as fast as a JCB or me. <laughs> And you got Romero, who's just a walking red card, and then you got Joe Rodon ripping it up in France. But so I had a little look. I had the same sort of intrigue about him, and I had a little look at his like scores, his his history, and I think I think the answer is purely he's just had really bad luck with injuries because he seems to be like constantly, constantly out. Yeah. Um, and I remember him like when he was a bit younger, thinking he was a really good like prospect. But I'm trying to load up to show you, but Green's Green's having a moment, so maybe we'll just let it do that. Um, but yeah, anyway, while I was one thing I was as I was going through that Swiss team was like, Bolo is the weak link. What would I actually do to fill that gap if I could sign anyone in Europe for the Euros and the next couple of games come up? I went Harry Kane, Antoine Griezmann. Who would you boys go? Is there anyone else? What's the question? Who would I buy as a striker in Europe that plays internationally in the next game week? Yeah, I'm finding it really hard to find good strikers in Europe, um, like um, as in international European. Yeah, but no one's going to be. Well, I say no one. Most people are not going to afford to buy an Mbappe. Yeah. I, so I would be I'm, looking at Gakpo, Isaac, Rashford. Rashford. I was going to say Rashford. Yeah. I was thinking about Rashford. Yeah, but then I worry about his injuries. He's only 25 though, isn't he? He's got. Yeah, it's true. Right. Though, like, it's not a huge amount of. It's not a lot, is there? I think one thing that I would say about Euro qualifying, which I think is good, is that every group, every single time they have for qualifying, every group has at least one absolute pony team in it. It's like sometimes even two. You got like awful teams, and then you have got like a next tier of kind of good teams, and then like a higher echelon of like the best teams. So actually, if you can get one of those fixtures that has a good team. Like a team like Austria or, or no offense, but Switzerland that aren't aren't that top tier, but like they're that that next tier down, you can actually get some real good value players that have really good matchups mm-hmm. because they're, they're not like priced like a top tier team, but actually they're likely to get a very good score playing at home against Gibraltar's dentists. Um, I think we, like, we could do it, give them a game in our five. I mean, if, you at, if you look at European qualifiers compared to like South American qualifiers, where they all play against each other, and the teams are like, even the the lesser good teams in South America would absolutely dick the lesser teams in in Europe. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a lot of minnows versus like major teams in in European qualifiers. Rasmus Hoyland. Ah, yes, good show. Yeah, yeah he's he's Man United. That's a great a one. He's like at, Atlanta guy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He looks sort of like the real deal. He's got a little bit of like Haaland about him that he can do. He's got that burst of pace. He's got he's long, and, he's got long and, blonde, and he's got long blonde hair as well. Yeah, exactly. Great wow. player. There you there go. go. Done it. Under an hour as well. Look at us. I know. I was just, just looking at that. Bloody hell. That's the um, first. So yeah, there you go. So it, it seems ridiculous looking at Euro 2024 year ahead, but as always, it comes super fast and then we end up paying double or treble the prices and saying why the hell didn't I plan so I'm actually genuinely my I've got a rule in place where I'm at all my purchases at the minute I'm trying to bring in through the door that will be Euro 2024 players again because I've got a small squad um how long will that last go on you'll sell, yeah. it. You'll sell it before you'll sell up well before then yeah, yeah. you'll there sell you up go. three times before the Euros to be fair yeah. set myself up there anyway right is, is there any plug before we finish boys Join our private league. It's week two. Registration still open till the middle of the month. Come win our prizes, uh, weekly and monthly prizes. Um, lot thirteen people beat us last week. Easy game. Come beat us. Win our prizes. And also, while you're here, please like and subscribe because we really feel warm and fuzzy when we get your extra support and we see it come <laughs> up on our dashboard. It makes us real happy and it makes our weekends um, more fantastic. But yeah, I need I need to feel warm and fuzzy. So. Listen to the man. That's it. All right. See you soon. See you next week.